Let's look at some announcements now that we've finished the quiz. Um, your first assignment having to do with momentum is due on Thursday uh, at 11. And then the uh, following class period on Tuesday. So a week from today, the second momentum assignment is due. And we're having the second exam. So that will be covering chapters 4, 5, and 6. I'll give some additional information about the exam on Thursday in class. Uh, today we're going to go over a couple of examples of the uh, applications of the momentum principle that we talked about last time. Uh, before we get started with that, are there any questions related to the announcements or anything else? I know that some of you have already started doing the experiment. Um, I had to unlock the lab this morning. It, uh, the, fluid, the technician, I think, uh, didn't unlock it right at 8. So, you know, if you want to use the lab and it doesn't happen to be open, please let me know and I'll come down and unlock it for you. Remember that uh, you need to upload by tomorrow at 2 p.m. So Wednesday at 2 is when your handout should be submitted. And then you have till the following Wednesday to turn in the report. And so today's Tuesday. You've got uh, today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday to actually conduct the experiment. Any questions about the lab experiment? We don't have lab tomorrow. We do not. We're not going to have any in-person meeting during uh, our normal lab time tomorrow. This week, you're just doing the lab at your own time. OK. Now, I've already showed you this slide before. It's the, the typical problem types having to do with momentum. So we're working with jets of fluid. We're working with veins, which is an application of a jet where some fluid stream is being redirected, so its, its direction is changing, and then nozzles. Today we'll talk about jets and veins. We won't get to nozzles until Thursday. All three of these problem types use the same form of the momentum equation. Now this is showing it in the x direction. Remember that the left-hand side of this equation, the way to interpret that is it's the sum of the forces required to hold the system steady. So what you're calculating is the external force that has to be applied to hold the system stationary. And it has to do with the sum of the mass flows out minus the sum of the mass flows in. Now, um, here's the first example we're going to look at today. Um, there is a tank of water that's receiving an incoming jet. What we know about that jet that's coming in is we know it's 15 meters per second. So that's the absolute speed. And then you can see the direction of that jet of water is it's at a 70 degree angle with the horizontal surface that's this liquid in the tank. The diameter of the jet is given as 30 millimeters. So since we know that it's water, that gives us the density, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Since the diameter is specified, we're going to assume a circular cross-section. And you can cal calculate the uh, cross-sectional area like we just did in the quiz. And so with all this information, you're going to be able to find uh, the component of the velocity that's in the x direction, the component of the velocity that's in the y direction. Because we know the tank mass, 5 kilograms, is how much the metal container itself weighs. And right now, there's 20 liters of water inside of the tank. Now, the, the weight of the tank and the volume of water that's in there right now is going to tell you the force that's acting on the bottom of the tank. So there's some force pushing up on the bottom of this tank, like the table that it's sitting on is pushing up on the tank. And it's pushing up in the amount of how much the tank itself weighs and how much the water in the tank weighs. But then also, there's a third force, a third component of that upward vertical force that's being applied to the tank. It's partly going to be pushing up to resist the jet impact of that water that's coming in. OK, so that kind of describes what's going on in the vertical. What about in the horizontal? What's the purpose of this stop block? I mean, I guess it's in the name, right? The stop block is stopping. Um, if that stop block wasn't there, then maybe that tank potentially could slide to the left. Because that jet of water, just kind of think about if you're spraying something directionally, uh, because that jet is coming in from the right towards the left, 
Now it, it's carrying some of them, that momentum and uh, exerting it into the water and the tank itself. And so the stop block is there to prevent the tank from shifting leftward. And so what we want to know is what force does the stop block apply to the tank? Now think about the equation that we've seen so far. Remember that the left-hand side of that equation says it's the force required to hold the system steady. Let me copy this into here so we can see it as you work. So the force required to hold the system steady, that is what we're talking about. The force that the block is applying to the tank is how much is required to hold it steady so that the tank doesn't start to move. Um, so let's do that uh, first in the horizontal, then in the vertical. And so what I'd like you to do is ask yourself, you know, first of all, where is the control surface that this momentum is flowing through? If you've got a tank of water and a jet that's coming in, what you ought to do is select a control surface that encompasses that water and the cross of the uh, jet into uh, the tank. And so you can see in the equation here, we first look at what's the mass flow rate out and the velocity out in the x direction. So through this control surface, there isn't any flow out. So the mass flow rate out and the velocity out term, that's going to be zero. But now the mass flow rate in, you're going to get that from the velocity, the diameter, which tells you the area, and then the fact that it's water gives you the density. So the mass flow rate out, you can calculate. And remember that mass flow rate does not have direction. It's a scalar. So the fact that this stream is to the left, we don't have to worry about that when we're calculating the mass flow rate. And the fact that it's this 70 degree angle, that doesn't change the mass flow rate either. Both of those do affect what we put in for the velocity in in the x direction. See how it says mass flow rate in, but it doesn't say mass flow rate in in the x direction. It just says mass flow rate in. But then when we're talking about the velocity, we just want to know both the direction and what component of that velocity, how much of the 15 meters per second is in the horizontal direction. So from that, what you're going to have to do is take a look at the angle that's given. And so with the cosine of 70, you'll be able to find what uh, component of that velocity is in the x direction. All right, so I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, give you some time to think about it, work with your classmates here. Remember, what we're trying to find is the force in the x direction. So what force has to be applied by the stop block to the tank to hold the system steady? We want to know the direction and the magnitude of that force. Okay, uh, so this one. We've got this water coming in at 15 meters per second. And um, so the diameter of the jet's 30 millimeters, the angle is 70 degrees. So we need to calculate the cross sectional area of the jet. 7.069 times 10 to the fourth meter squared. Uh, you can see I did some of the other preliminary stuff up top here. Even though I'm not going to need it till I do the y direction calculations, I found the weight of the tank <coughs> from the given five kilogram mass. So I know how much the tank weighs. I know how much the water weighs that's inside the tank. So the water weight is the, uh, the unit weight, 9810 times the volume that's there. But uh, in the x direction, um, first of all, here's the, the generalized momentum equation. So this is the sum of the forces required to hold the system steady in the x direction are the sum of the mass flow out times the velocity out in the x direction. So let's look at the picture. There's no flow out. This is just water that's coming into the control volume and being accumulated. So we can cancel out this whole first term. So there's no flow out, only flow in. So now what about this second term here? So we're saying minus the sum of all the mass flow in 
And it's not saying the mass flow in in the x direction. It's just saying the mass flow in. So what that's going to be is some number in kilograms per second, how much water in kilograms per second is coming in to the control volume through the control surfaces. And so you can see the formula here. I'm saying that mass flow rate is going to be volumetric flow rate times density. Or another way of looking at it is density times the area of the jet times the velocity. Now, I don't need to take the cosine or the sine or any kind of directionality into account when I'm determining that mass flow rate. Because if you look at the formula, it's not saying like the mass flow rate component in the x direction. We're going to handle the directionality component with the velocity. So you don't want to double correct for the fact that that flow is coming at an angle. We only need to correct one time for the, the component that's coming in the x direction. So I want to find the total mass flow rate in. So it's going to be the density times the area times the velocity. So it's 10.6 kilograms per second. How many people got that for the mass flow rate? OK, good. So thumbs up on the mass flow rate. And once we have it, that's when we then take the, uh, the component of the 15 meters per second and the direction into account. So you can see I put the minus sign there. So minus 15 meters per second, because it's to the left. This minus, that's before this entire term, is because we're talking about a mass flow rate in. So these two minus signs are ultimately going to cancel each other out, which means the interpretation is the force required to hold the system steady is a force to the right. So here, this F sub x that I calculated of 54.4 newtons, that means that we have to apply an external force on the tank. We're pushing it to the right to resist the momentum that's coming in that otherwise would cause the force to drift to the left. Now, does that just make sense with your instinct that if you have a spray of water coming in, that would cause that to move to the left? And so the force that this stop block is applying to the tank is to the right. And the magnitude of that force, 54.4 newtons. So any questions about that? Does it make sense to everybody? So then the, uh, the total force in the y direction the momentum component of the force is going to now, we have to find the sine of 70 to find the vertical component of that 15 meters per second. So most of that 15 meters per second is in the vertical plane rather than in the horizontal. So the mass flow rate's the same, but it's just what fraction of this momentum is going to be vertical. So this is how much force is required to account for the momentum, but then the overall force acting upward is the weight of the tank, the weight of the water, and the force required to resist the momentum. So that the total force that's upward acting on the tank bottom is 394.6 newtons. Everybody's good with that? Any questions? All right, let's look at a vein. This plate, this inclined plate is deflecting the jet that comes. And uh, 70 degrees again. I guess we should have been a little more uh, creative about the angle. Um, so we have a jet that's coming in. And when it impacts that, um, that plate, it deflects some of the flow down. And some of the flow gets deflected upward. Uh, we know the mass flow rate. And you can see they've sketched out the control volumes there. This is another one where there's no accumulation that's happening inside of, their, inside of the control volume. Just what comes in goes out. So mass flow rate in equals mass flow rate out. Or volumetric flow in equals volumetric flow out. Now we're given these three velocities. Um, there's a, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think there might be occasions where they don't directly tell you the velocity that's coming out. Like, um, I think you've got some sort of a problem where there's a jet of water and some of it gets redirected here and some of it comes out. And uh, I think in that problem, well, I think we're going to look at a key idea of it, but the assumption is that the velocity stays the same, I think. 
Uh, but here, the velocity isn't staying the same. You see that velocity at one is 11.5 meters per second. I think what they're implying is that as there's that redirection of the jets, that um, because the diameters are changing, then the velocities change. But there's no net accumulation. So if you look at the, uh, the diameter at 3 is given. And so what we can say for this one is that uh, the streams are numbered. That kind of makes it easy. So m dot 1 equals m dot 2 plus m dot 3. So in other words, that's saying in equals out. Okay, on a volumetric basis, what would we say? We'd say Q1 equals Q2 plus Q3. Okay, fair enough. Um, or we could say A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2 plus A3 V3. Now, we at 1, we know the velocity and we know the mass flow rate, but we don't necessarily have the uh, diameter of that jet. It's OK. We don't need it. Because what we can do is we can say mass flow rate at 1 is equal to the density, the area to velocity 2, plus the density, area 3, velocity 3. All right, so let's look at the givens. We know the mass flow rate at 1, so that check mark says we know it. Um, the velocity at 2 is given. The velocity at 3 is given. This is water, so the density is known. And the diameter at 3 is given, so then that means that uh, we can calculate the area at 3. So you can calculate the area at 2 from this relationship. And then, once you have the area at 2, we can apply the, uh, the sum of the forces to find um, what force does the water jet apply to the deflection plate. Now, I'm underlining and bolding this to draw attention to the fact that this is not asking what force is required to hold the system steady. Like normally, this formula would tell you how much does this wall have to push on the plate to hold the plate steady. This is asking, the problem statement is asking for the equal and opposite reaction. So it's saying, how much is the water pushing on the plate, not how much is the plate pushing on the water. So you'll solve this equation like we just did in the previous problem, except for now, it's a little more complicated because we do have flow out as well as flow in. Um, we've got flow in the x and in the y. There's multiple streams. And then you're going to have to flip the signs of things, because uh, you'll use this formula to find the force of the plate on the water jet. But the question is asking for the equal and opposite reaction of that. All right, so I'm going to pause this again. What you should do is uh, use this relationship, set of relationships that I've written on the board here to find out um, what is the, let's see, yeah, the mass flow rate at uh, 2 and the mass flow rate at 3. You can calculate the mass flow rate at 3 directly. I guess just from subtraction, you can find the mass flow rate at 2, right? You don't even have to go so far as this, because we know that mass flow rate at 1 is given, mass flow rate at 3 is going to be density, area 3, velocity 3. So then, by process of elimination, you can find the mass flow rate at 2. All right, so there's a lot going on in this one, because we have, in the x direction, an n and two outs. And then in the y direction, we have out, but no in. So this is a tricky one. 
Um, and I messed up on the simplest thing, which is calculating the cross-sectional area. All right, so uh, cross-sectional area, um, which isn't shown correctly on the screen there, it's 3.141 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. The idea being that if you find the cross-sectional area at 3, then that allows you to find the mass flow rate at 3. So um, this value here should actually be 3.14 times 10 to the minus fourth. But you do, it looks like uh, I must have just written it down wrong at this stage, and I, I had it right in my calculator or something, because the mass flow rate at 3 is 3.11 kilograms per second. So then by subtraction, then that tells us what the mass flow rate at 2 is, because whatever comes in has to go out. So uh, M1 is equal to M3 plus M2. So M2 is 3.59 kilograms per second. So in the x direction, what we've got is, uh, remember, out minus in. So we've got the out streams are stream 2 and stream 3. The in stream is stream 1. Mass flow rate is going to be a positive number, and it doesn't, it's not affected by the direction. So we don't need to do like the sine or cosine of the angle or a negative sign for the mass flow rate itself, because that's accounted for in the, uh, in the velocity. So stream two was the one that was going up and to the right. So let's just look at the, uh, the original problem statement here. So stream two is going to the right, and so that velocity is going to be positive. So here where I have 10.8 meters per second, that's a positive, and then I account for what component of it is in the uh, x direction with cosine of 70. Stream 3, though, when we multiply the mass flow rate at stream 3 by the velocity, now the minus sign has to be there for stream 3, because stream 3 is to the left. So that's, you know, to the minus, according to our sign convention, our direction uh, convention, is the left would be a negative velocity. And then what component of it is in the x direction we get from the cosine of 70 degrees. So that's the, uh, the flow out. And now we have minus the flow in. And in the x direction, it's the entire 11.5 meters per second. So we don't need any kind of an angle conversion for the x direction. So the, the forces that we calculate here, the sum of the forces in the x direction, this minus 74.32, that's the force that's required to hold the system steady. So the force of the jet on the plate would be to the right. It would be the opposite of that. Now, let's take a second look at this picture and reflect if this is making sense. What direction is the water pushing on the plate? Is the water exerting a force on the plate to the right or to the left? I mean, just by looking, you can tell that the water is pushing on the plate. Think about it. Here's the water. Here's the plate. It's pushing the plate to the right. And so the way that it's asking, what force does the water jet apply to the deflection plate? It will be a positive because the water applies a rightward force to the plate. This equation, the reason why we initially got the minus sign in the solution is because this solves for the force required to hold the system steady. And to hold the system steady, because of the reaction that's occurring, we would have to exert a force to the left. So does everyone understand the equal and opposite thing that's going on here? Because of the phraseology of what it's asking for, the force of the jet on the plate? OK, now in the, uh, in the y direction, we've got out minus in except for that there is no in in the y direction. So you can see I'm saying minus 0 for the flow in in the y direction. Oops, I think I should have written the y there. That'll be another thing I have to fix in this example. This is in the y direction. OK, so what are the, what's the mass flow rate out in the y direction? It's stream 2. And this time, the sine of the angle and stream 3. Now, let's look at the picture. 
we're talking about the y direction. So in the y direction, stream two is up, so its velocity component is going to be positive, whereas stream three is down, so its velocity component is going to be negative. So that's why here in the solution for stream three, we have the, uh, the minus 9.9 .9 is because it's downward. So the force required to hold this system steady would be 7.5 newtons. That means that we'd have to push up to hold the system steady. So the reaction of the jet on the plate is that the jet is pushing the plate downward. And that's a little bit harder to just look at and immediately know based on this picture that the, uh, the jet is pushing the plate downward. But the reason why the net force is downward is that not all of the mass is being split evenly. You know, a, more of the mass, if we look at the mass flow rates, uh, is going in the direction that causes the, uh, the force of the jet on the plate downward. Okay, we are out of time, so let me remind you of the announcement that your next assignment is due on Thursday. If you have questions, um, please feel free to stop by my office. We didn't have time to talk about these key ideas, and so can I have your attention, please? I'll make a short video that explains these key ideas since we ran out of time. So if you need the help, I'll give you a link for the YouTube video where I discuss those key ideas.